Welcome back, and today we're going to take a look at the Tactile Knife Co. Maverick. This is a brand new model for them. It's a uh, Richard Rogers design. That's his maker's mark right there, and it's a very clean, classy looking knife with a nice drop point blade and CPM Magna Cut, and they have HRC'd it to the proper HRC coming in at like 6364 so this thing should perform really really well you have a nice and thin blade stock coming in at 0 0.095 that's like bug out territory and it's ground decently thin too it's coming in at around 16 thousandths behind the edge now the edge bevel is a little bit more obtuse than i like but that's something that i could change if i would like to it has a nice stone wash finish uh nice point for piercing task nice high flat grind Got a perfectly executed sharpening choil that should give you a bunch of sharpening light before it starts to widen up. I sharpened it up after the testing and no problem whatsoever. Nice consistent even bevel on both sides. And this is a full size EDC knife coming in at 8.2 inches. It's got a 3.5 inch blade, 4 inch grip area. So it should be able to fit your large, extra large hands just fine. Now I think it's time to do a little cutting. knife came extremely sharp out of box and just like all the tactile knives i've ever gotten came very very sharp uh, this knife has pretty darn thin blade stock it's kind of like bug out stock and it's ground fairly thin to around you know 16 thousandths or so so it's really passing through the material nicely the edge the factory edge is a little bit obtuse but definitely something that you could lower uh, if you wanted to on your own but I decided to throw an extra uh, thing of cardboard in this testing because this is Magna Cut at 63-64. So it should definitely be able to handle it. But so far, outstanding job. Now we're going to test the ergos on this piece of birch. And <clears throat> one thing I noticed right away <clears throat> is that your handle is pretty darn thin. So... For doing light duty, you know, if you're making feather sticks light, you know, with a light touch, it's perfectly fine. But whenever I really started bearing down into that wood, I could start feeling the pocket clip a good bit. And uh, it was starting to fatigue my wrist and my forearms rather quickly just because it's thinner, it's contoured. So you don't want it to spin in your hand. So you're going to squeeze the hand tighter. But, you know, could you do it in a pinch? Yeah, most definitely can get it done. And... Now we move to the three quarter inch sisile rope. Now <laughs> I bought some new rope and I've learned really quickly that all sisal rope is not created equally. The fibers on this particular uh, strand of rope are very loose. So what, that, what happens is, is some sections are so loose that whenever I go to push down, it just kind of twists out and makes it a lot more difficult to uh, cut <laughs> but uh, we got a pretty decent little uh, piece toward the middle so it started cutting a lot better it's going to be excellent on uh, these flat cutting surfaces because you got an, a decent bit of belly to that drop point uh, it's comfortable in the pinch grip and it didn't have the bite i would normally want but uh, it definitely was sharp uh, still has a nice edge here. We end up getting through 40 cuts and not bad for the difficulty on this uh, this this hank of rope right here. Uh, definitely be the last time I use it, this particular one. I did order a few more so hopefully I get some that, that aren't this uh, loose. Because I don't know if you ever tried cutting this. It's definitely very very difficult when it comes unraveled. Don't you? You can see it right there. But <laughs> comfortable like this and definitely felt like I could have done a lot more if I would have had the half inch and if if it would have been a little bit tighter of a weave so definitely not bad at all Being that the tip on this drop point is a lot higher, it's above the center line of the scales, you're not going to really, it's going to be difficult to get that tip 
into what you're cutting for doing drag cuts, but the belly works just fine. Uh, it was definitely nice and slicey and uh, didn't struggle on anything. Uh, it seemed to, to do very well. And one thing that I noticed with my uh, both of my rock walls is that once I gave it a good sharpening myself, man, it, the performance just jumps up dramatically. I don't know if they, they sharpen these on a belt or not, but it would make sense if they do. Uh, but at this point, it's still performing very, very nicely. And of course, once we finish all the testing, we will check that edge and see how it is. Uh, I would think it's still pretty darn good. At least it feels really nice and uh, sharp, but you never know. The edge still feels good. Let's check it out. Whoops. Yeah, nice and sharp. Now let's take a look at the deployment in action. This is a thumb stud knife. It's riding on phosphor bronze washers and you have a crossbar lock. Mine has broken in nicely. Very, very smooth action. Nice and snappy action. And one thing that I did notice about this crossbar lock is that it is an adjustable crossbar lock, just like the clutch lock from Kaiser. There's three little dots in there that you can move the spring as far as you would like. You know, you can either increase the tension to give it more of a detent or you can loosen it up some, whatever you choose. One thing that I did notice is, is that the thumb studs are, are a little bit slick on top. There's not a whole lot of texture to them. Um, I didn't really have any problems slipping off, but that's just something to be aware of. Now let's take a look at this handle area, which is absolutely stunning. You have the tactile uh, micro milling that they're so well known for. Um, and I think it looks so, so nice where they, they integrated it into the pivot, kind of like they had the pivot in there first because it lines up perfectly. Like the nice little pop of color from the anodization on that pivot, and I like the shape of that pivot. Um, you have beautiful contouring on here. However, the scales are a little thin, so, you know, prolonged cutting for a long period of time, probably fatigue your wrist and form, kind of like I talked about in the actual testing. You have a fairly neutral uh, handle, no crazy choils besides this one up here in the front. So it's rather comfortable for your light duty task. You have a uh, flush Torx T8, very crisp pivot there. And you have T8 for your body screws and your clip screws. Very nicely done. You can see they're very well done and nice and flush with the scales. You have two standoffs, hourglass standoffs in the back right here that are anodized blue. And you do have two stainless steel inset liners in there. Um, they're not skeletonized, so let's check out the weight. First 10 grams coming in at 110 grams or 3.88 ounces outstanding all right now we're gonna take a look at the lock like i said this is a crossbar lock that can be adjust adjusted i have absolutely no play left or right i can kind of flex i mean get a little bit of movement up and down just where the uh the the tang of the blade is kind of rocking on the crossbar lock now if i put it to the strongest tension i probably wouldn't have any there uh, but I prefer it like that so I can, you know, easily flip out my blade nicely and retract it nicely. So no problem with uh, the way it sits. Your pocket clip is fairly deep carry. As you can see, it's on these little standoffs right here and it functions fairly well. It's got some decent spring to it. Now, one thing that I mentioned during my testing, being that you got the thinner scales and their contour, whenever I was really bearing down, I'm squeezing on this handle a lot tighter so it doesn't want to turn in the hand. And whenever I was squeezing tight, my finger, my, my fat of my hand was going into the middle of that clip, causing a little bit of a hot spot. It wasn't unbearable, but definitely something that I, I wanted to talk about. Now, this is tip up right hand carry only, unfortunately. Now for some quick size comparisons, we got the Ontario Rat Model 1 and 2. It's similar to the Rat 1. Spyderco PM2 and Para 3. It's uh, more in line with the Para 2. Last, we had the Hogue Ritter RSK and Mini RSK. It's a little bit bigger than the RSK. All right, nitpicks and complaints. Uh, you know, these are just nitpicks. 
I would have liked to have the handle scales a little bit thicker, maybe not have this, the full stainless steel liners just to lighten it up a little bit, but it's still way light enough. But if you did add some extra thickness to these scales, it would make it a little heavier, especially with the stainless liners. Also, I would have liked it to be tipped for left-handed carry as well, so you don't exclude that size of the market because this is an axis style lock. A completely ambidextrous lock, but you don't have a left-handed carry. I definitely think they missed a mark on that one with uh, the design. And something that, you know, <laughs> is not ideal. I took the knife apart to just to show y'all. I'll pop up pictures right now while I'm talking. And something that I noticed is you can't completely take the knife apart. Or at least I couldn't because the two standoffs in the back hold the the liner on the 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 left side of the scale so if you take it apart you better be very careful unless you can figure out how to take those out they i think they they must have those loctite in there because i've tried a few different things and mine wasn't they weren't budging but <laughs> being that you can't take those out if this spring the little uh where it sits in here comes out you're going to be in a bind. So I would just leave it together, blow it out with compressed air, and uh, put a drop of oil in there if you need it. But, um, you know, mine mine got smooth without, you know, doing anything extra to it. Uh, I just wanted to show the inside of it. So, you know, is that a negative? I don't know. Uh, they have an excellent warranty. They're, they're excellent to work with. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, at least to me, it's not. And, you know, for some people, the price is going to be a negative at $349. Do I think it's out of line? I, I don't really think it's out of line. This is a totally USA made knife. They outsource, if, if, if they outsource anything, which I don't even know if they do on this, like screws or anything, it, it's still made in the United States. So this is a completely made in the United States knife. And there's another company that, that does this type of locking mechanism. I'm not going to say names. But if they would do this knife, we already know how much it would cost. Because they just did one kind of like this. <clears throat> narrows. And uh, it was very, very expensive. So $349 I definitely think is, is not bad whatsoever. And like I said, you have uh, warranty folks that you could reach out to. They're very responsive. And... Uh, you're getting a nice quality knife now to me I, I those new fat carbon ones that that have dropped uh here recently i think are outstanding they look so nice that carbon fiber should be nice and rigid so you shouldn't have the flex that they were having on some of the micarta ones so i definitely think that's another good option they're the same price as the all tie so it just depends on what you want but uh, I definitely think those fat carbon ones look nice. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Uh